This video is not an introductory video, it assumes some prior knowledge. It's going to be about these, which are resistors, and it's going to be about this. Wow, that was weird. Stay. R equals V divided by I. We're going to look at what that equation actually means. We're going to assume that you've met it before. To help us explore this equation, I've built this circuit. You can't really see it because my power supply is off camera. My ammeter and my voltmeter are this data logger just here. And here's my 1 ohm resistor. So case 1, R is going to be 1 ohm. So if we look at our equation and we make R as 1, we should find that V equals I. And we should find that V divided by I should give us 1. Let's have a look and see what happens. We'll turn the voltage up. And you can indeed see that when the voltage goes up, the current goes up, and they are approximately the same. If we press play, we see now that the ratio is 0 0.9, 0 0.8 is approximately 1. Let's turn the voltage up higher. As the voltage goes up, the current goes up. They pretty well keep track of each other. I don't think my resistor is quite 1 ohm. And the ratio stays constant. So what's happening here? is that the voltage and current are going up, the ratio V over I stays constant at 1. So we found that V is approximately equal to I, R is approximately 1 ohm. That's very good. That's what we wanted to see. Let's try it again. Turn it down to 0. And we'll take that resistor out and put it on a higher value. We're going to use a 10 ohm resistor this time. What should we find? Well, what we should find in case number 2 is that R equals 10 ohms. So therefore, in this equation here, we should be able to write V is approximately 10 times I. And we should find that V over I is approximately 10. I randomly stopped it here and it came down to be minus 10. That's just a fluctuation of a data log. Forget that. Let's press play. And what we find here is that when the current is 0 0.7, the voltage is 0 0.7, 0 0.07, 0 0.7. It's approximately 10 times different. And the resistance, the V over I, is approximately 10. Let's go up further. So we make the voltage, let's say, 2. And the current becomes 0 0.2. The resistance stays at approximately 10. We keep going up. And no matter how high we go, the voltage and current stay in step with each other. The voltage is always 10 times greater, and this value, V over I, doesn't change. It stays at around about 10. So this is also good. It works again. Now, the question is, do all components do this? Do all components have a fixed value of V over I, a fixed resistance? Well, you'd think that by me very asking the very question, the answer is going to be no. This is going to take a moment to set up. This resistor is really hot. It was actually smoking a moment ago. Right, so let's take a light bulb, we'll attach it on here, and we'll attach it on here. It's quite difficult to fit these on. There we go. And we'll turn our power supply back up again. And what we find here is that the resistance of this light bulb is very similar to the resistance of the 10 ohm resistor. It's about 11 ohms. And we can see the voltage is 10 times bigger than the current, as we would expect. Now let's see what happens to the resistance as we turn up the voltage. Well, first of all, the light bulb starts to glow, which is nice. The resistance has risen dramatically. As we keep increasing the voltage and therefore increasing the current, the filament gets hotter. As the filament gets hotter, V over I continues to increase. And in actual fact, in a light bulb, the resistance isn't fixed. V over I is not constant. In actual fact, V over I depends on how hot the filament is. And the hotter it gets, the higher the resistance value. So that's a demonstration that it's not necessarily the case that V over I resistance remains constant. However, it is the case that this voltage here is always equal to that current multiplied by that resistance. Now we're going to look at the same circuit, but we're going to use a data logger to plot a graph. So here's my graph. And we're going to look at this equation to see which graph we should plot. And if we rewrite it as V equals R times I, 
we'll recognize that's the graph of a straight line, y equals mx. And we have to have a very, very, very important proviso here. This is only a straight line if the gradient and therefore the resistance remain constant. So in many cases, the gradient is not the resistance. If the resistance changes, you can't use the gradient as the resistance. In this case, we're going to use a resistor which is fixed. So the gradient is fixed, the resistance is fixed, the gradient is fixed. We should be OK. So let's have a look and see what we get. I'll turn up, I'll press play on my data logger. And I'll turn up the voltage. And I'll turn the voltage back down again. And you'll see that in both directions, we get a beautiful straight line. It looks something like this. And this was for our one ohm resistor. A very bad graph, I have no scales on there, so I could put a scale on there if I wanted. I could go to maybe one amp, and that would require maybe one volt. So there we go. Oops, that's the wrong symbol. One volt. Now, let's change this resistor and put in a 10 ohm resistor, the one we were using before. And the question is, what's the graph going to look like? Well, it should still be a straight line graph. The only thing we've changed is the resistor, the resistance, so the gradient should be 10 instead of 1. It should be steeper. Let's see if that's what we get. Turn up the voltage, and turn back down the voltage again. And what we see there, I'll just press stop now, and what we see there is we get a much steeper line, like that. In fact, what this means is that our, at our 1 volt mark, when 1 volt was causing 1 amp to flow through our 1 ohm resistor, in our 10 ohm resistor, the same 1 volt was only managing to make 0 0.1 amps flow. So there's our graph, demonstrated live. You get a straight line graph with a fixed resistance. Now let's have a look at the situation with a light bulb. Here's my bulb. I'm actually starting it on just to show it's working. It's the same circuit, the same equation. And we've got to be very careful here because the resistance is now going to change as we saw before. We're going to plot the same graph. I'm actually going to do some calculations this time. So I've put units on. I'm measuring in amps and volts. And I've already got the data logger running. Here is my starting point. Okay, I'm taking 0 0.05 amps, 4 volts. So I can actually work out the resistance of the bulb immediately. In fact, I need a calculator. There is a calculator. This is awesome. R equals V divided by I, so 4 divided by 0 0.05 equals the answer is 80. So at the moment, the resistance of this light bulb at the brightness it's lit up at is 80 ohms. And let's see what happens to the graph as we now go back down the ways. So we'll turn the voltage down. The light bulb is going to cool down. And what we'll find is that the graph is a nice little curve. And I'd like to just make a, an interesting point here. I'll just draw this graph on here first. There we go. I'd like to make a little interesting point. At this point here, the resistance is 80. If I were to incorrectly suggest that the resistance was the gradient, then that would suggest that that gradient is 80. That gradient there is 80. But that's not the case. That value there is 80. The gradient of the line is steeper than 80. OK? So the gradient of the line does not represent the resistance when the resistance is changing. That's the gradient. Sorry, that's the, that's V over I, a line from there to there. The gradient is steeper than that. The gradient does have an influence. Um, the gradient, if the higher gradient does represent a higher resistance, but it's just not numerically equal. So down here we've got a lower gradient. The resistance of the filament is lower because it's colder. Here is a higher gradient. The resistance of the filament is higher because it's hotter. But the gradient doesn't, does not numerically equal the resistance. You have to work out resistance using V divided by I. So that shows you the shape of the graph for a light bulb.